Typecast Heroes, where we believe typology can save the world. I'm Amanda Fogelson. And I'm Jesse Miller, and today we are going to be talking about the ENTJs and the results of the study that we had conducted regarding ENTJs and their experience in the education system. We'll also be looking at some other things like metacognition, logical processing, and their overall opinions on certain structures within the educational system. So if you want to go see all of the numbers and all of the data, you can go over to our blog and it'll have all of the charts, all of the graphs, all of the things if you are really curious and you really want to get into it. But otherwise, we're just going to give you a quick overview of all of the things that were notable in the study, at least to us. If you want to know more all about the project, you can go to our very first video, which is over a year old now. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Typecast Heroes, and it is incredibly rough, so please have mercy, but you can go ahead and look and see what we were trying to envision with the project and all of that information as well. So now we're going to go over some of the demographics for the ENTJs who participated. First of all, ENTJs were such a bear to find. Oh my gosh. So every type that we talk about, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the searching that had to go into finding them. So I started with the NT types, mm -hmm. I think in the beginning. Um, so that started in February of 2020. 20. Mm -hmm. Was finding enough ENTJs to complete this project. So most of the ENTJs who came to us were from Facebook or Reddit or Discord. But in the beginning, the only platform we were on was Facebook. And so I would just go into Facebook groups and post asking for people to participate. The ENTJ group on Facebook took, I think, six months to let me in. <laughs> To the group so that I could solicit in there and then once I got in there I chickened out and could never <laughs> post could never post a request looking for ENTJs but ENTJs turned out to be super friendly super helpful the ones that participated in the project so thank you to those of you who did participate especially to reddit because we had a huge flood of them come in all at once I think after we posted one of our cognitive functions in each of the placement videos a huge yes. swell of people came in from reddit so that was super helpful so thank you to them now we're going to get into some of the demographics into the specifics. So there was 55% male, 45% female, which is a pretty even split. Some of the other groups you're going to see a much wider distinction. One of the things that I've noticed is that the NTs in particular tend to be more evenly split than some of the others, particularly the SC types. There were 110 total participants who made it successfully into this project. Some of the ENTJs who participated very early, I didn't end up using those because I had to still kind of really hone my craft before I could proceed with the project. The biggest age group represented for the ENTJs was that 18 to 29, but it was only slightly majority, 51%. Just like we've said in some of the other videos where we talk about this data, you can expect from the extroverts that they are going to skew a little older because that is when people are really starting to get into their introspection. If you're an extrovert, you don't tend to become very introspective and don't do journeys of self-discovery until you are a little bit more further along in your life's journey. Unless you've somehow been steered that mm -hmm. direction in your life. And I feel like Ian two days would have corrected us on that. So I just mm -hmm. to it's throw true. out there. Some of them are very yeah. self-aware. Some of them have done a lot of self-work at, at a young age. Obviously, since this is almost half um, 18 to 29. Mm -hmm. There were 27 total countries accounted for from the ENTJs, and then the last bit of notable data about the ENTJs is that they had the highest word count of all of the thinkers at an average of 89 words per response. So that was significantly higher than some of the other thinkers, and it was also higher than some of the other feelers as well. So one of the things that we're going to see is ENTJs like to make their opinions known. They have no problem making their opinions known. So the first question that all of the types were asked was a type specific question. So it was a negative stereotype. And part of me was curious just to see what they had to say about the stereotypes about their type. But I was also really interested in how they were going to address the concept. If they were gonna be pulling from their own experience or if they were gonna be pulling from sort of a more holistic view of the type as a whole. I just really wanted to see how they handled that question. So if you want to look at all the question rationale again, go hit up the blog and you can see all of the things that you would want to know. So the question that I asked ENTJs was, there is a stereotype regarding ENTJs that they value efficiency to the extent that they have a tendency to push others over in order to get to their goals. 
What is your belief regarding this idea? So right off the bat, I was curious how many ENTJs were going to agree with this stereotype. And I honestly expected a lot less of them to agree than what ended up occurring. But 67% of ENTJs did think that this was true, that ENTJs have a tendency to do whatever it takes to get their goals met. However, Something that's interesting is only 30% of the answers included the phrase or including included the word ENTJ. Would you call that a word or a phrase? Ooh. I think it's a word, it's right? A word. Yeah, because yeah. it's a type. Yeah, yeah. So only 30% of the ENTJs actually included their own type. However, over half of them focused on big picture. So what they did was pretty unique to ENTJs. I really cannot think of another type that did this. They went after the concept of efficiency and justice and fairness and goals. And so rather than address the question head on of, no, this question is not correct, or no, this stereotype is not correct, or yes, the stereotype is, which some of the ENTJs did answer that way, over half of them decided to go more holistically. So they would start talking about how, well, a goal, in order to meet your goals correctly, you're going to have to be efficient and you're going to have to be fair to all the people involved or otherwise it's going to include multiple pitfalls. So they didn't talk about themselves. They didn't really even talk about ENTJs. They just talked about the concepts represented in the question, which was very interesting. One of the other interesting things about this question is in addition to being more big picture focused, 68% of the responses were very abstract focused. So a lot of people have asked me questions when they see the type of open-ended questions that I put forward and they say, how could anybody answer that in any way but abstract? Well, they can show you concrete actions. So they will say things like, when I lead, I make a strict plan and no one in our group strays from that plan. So that would be more concrete action. In order to create the ultimate justice, you have to be efficient. That's completely abstract. There's no way you could follow those steps, but you could follow the steps of a to-do list and making sure that nobody deviates from that plan. I also feel like ENTJs have kind of this image on the internet of being very um, stern mm -hmm. and kind of no nonsense, but something that was interesting about them is I tracked for high connotative language. So there's a difference if you say these things tend to be this way or you say something like, I 100% agree, right? One of those has a stronger connotation. ENTJs had a tendency to have a much higher cognitive language or emotionally charged language than the other thinker types. So for this particular question, they had about third, a third of their answers included that emotionally charged language, but you're gonna see other types that have much lower. Not only did they have that high emotional charged language, but their use of, I feel that, was very low. Only 4% of their answers included I, the, the phrase, I feel. This was something I was interested in in the very beginning because I was talking to an INTP who said that he theorized that the feelers and thinkers would use these phrases differently, depending. So, something notable that ENTJs, that phrase, I feel, you're not going to see it. But I think was about a quarter of, or 40%, sorry, 40% of their answers included that phrase. So the second part of the survey was a task and all 16 types got the same task and that was to describe the inside of your mind. I love the way that the 16 types all addressed this issue. Um, if you wanna go look at the categories, you can go look on our blog and it shows you all six categories that the responses were classified as. But for the ENTJs, the notable data was that half of their answer fell in that abstract realm. So that was either the abstract descriptive. So they would say things like, I have ideas in mind, I have ideas in my mind and thoughts that are all swirling around into like this intricate web and they would give me all of these details about the colors. But it wasn't anything that you could see in reality. And that was the largest chunk of the ENTJ's answers. For the second largest part was the concrete metaphorical memory palaces. So they would say something like, my mind is a library and all of these books represent different memories. And they would give me very detailed, intricate locations to describe the inside of their mind. So those were the two big pieces for the ENTJ's. About half of their answers fell into those two categories. 
most ENTJs were able to answer this question. This was something that we were interested in is what percentage of the type would not be able to answer that because metacognition is a huge buzzword in education. So if you're not able to describe your thought processes, which two of these questions specifically deal with thought process, then it's going to, it's a pretty good chance that education will mm -hmm. trip you up the further up you go because you can't just show an answer. A lot of education is pushing it how you get the answer. So we're going to be talking about that as we continue on throughout this data. All of the 16 types were also given the same third question, and this is like our big question, but it is what is your take on formal education? So there are a lot of ways to interpret this question. And I was interested in, are they going to attack education as a whole? Are they going to talk about their own experience? Are they going to talk about the experience of their children? Are they going to say to their own country? How are they going to attack this? And so ENTJs loved this question. 119 words per average response, which is literally twice as long the response of <laughs> INTPs. Twice as long average. Um, they were the sweet little INTPs. Yeah. <laughs> I love their answers, so. I like ENTJs. I like all the answers. I always have to say that because people call me out on being having favorites. Um, but the ENTJ, so twice as long of a response as most of the other thinker types. Um, and they also <laughs> spent more time on this answer than most of the feeler types. And one of the big words or big buzzwords with education and in their answers was efficiency and organization. They saw the education system as very inefficient and very unorganized. We're going to be talking about this later on as we get into the implications of the study, but a 2012 study done, not by me, but done by somebody else, um, surveyed or it gave the MBTI exam to individuals who were in different aspects of education, of an education education program, I guess. So people who were going to school to be yeah. leaders in education or people who are going to school to be special education teachers or going to be, you know, regular classroom teachers. And ENTJs represented almost 20% of the leadership, um, of the people who were in leadership in education. So an ENTJ who is looking at the system, they're going to look at it and see where, this, where the system is particularly flawed. So let's go ahead and look at some of the hard numbers on this. 38% of ENTJs saw the education system good as a good system overall. So they would have words like it's a positive system or it's an impactful system. They would have an overall positive sentiment with their answer. 44% would have that negative kind of connotation when you are looking at their responses. And then 16% would have a mixed or undecided opinion. That 16% is important though because a lot of the thinker types spent more time in that undecided realm. ENTJs were third in overall decisiveness for this issue and they only followed after the two TI dominants. So after the INTPs and the ISTPs came ENTJs in terms of, this is what I believe, this is why I believe it. Which of course makes total sense. Mm -hmm. So we didn't ask people specifically about the personal experience, but a lot of types just automatically offer that up as part of what is your take on formal education. And so ENTJs did give a lot about the personal experience. Um, only 13% didn't mention their own experience in the education system at all. 70% of ENTJs self-reported a positive experience in the education system, which is interesting because then less than half of them have a positive opinion about the education system. So something that I've noticed a lot of um, with this, this study is that even if a person had a positive experience, they would have a negative opinion about the education system. So one of the things that Amanda and I are very passionate about promoting is understanding others. And I think one of the most valuable insights um, that this study is showing is that studying MBTI kind of gives you that background to understand that just because it worked for you doesn't mean that it will work for everyone else and doesn't mean that it should. And that was pretty much across the board the pattern that happened is that people would say, I had a positive experience but that doesn't mean that the education system works. So ENTJ's overwhelmingly positive experience, but also majority negative or mixed opinions about the education system as a whole. So some of the types really focused on their own personal experience when they looked at the education system, but ENTJ's 80%, just like we would expect with that introverted intuition parent 
they focus on the education system as a whole. So even if they were talking about their own experience, they did attack the entire construct, um, which is interesting. In fact, I think, yes, they are one of the types that has the highest percentage of big picture or holistic concept mentioned. So a lot of other types, it was like half of them mentioned it or sometimes even like a third yes. of them mentioned the big picture, but ENTJ is 80%. This is like the big concept, the big construct. Which again goes into that even if they were able to get through education and have a good time, make good grades, have a successful or positive outcome, when you look at their extroverted thinking hero and that introverted intuition parent uh, working together, it's always going to look big picture and then mm -hmm. efficiencies within that big picture. So going back to them being leaders within the education system fits the bill, totally mm -hmm. works. Just like before, um, the phrase I feel or I don't feel or any variation of that was really low for ENTJs. We're looking at less than 10%. Um, whereas I think is at half, half of their answers were, were included that phrase, I think, or I don't think, or what have you. Um, ENTJs continue to be incredibly decisive. Only 14% of their answers included that indecisive language. ENTJs also like to include evidence. So this was not mentioned in the other two, but when you go look at all of the data, if you want to go dig, really dig into it, um, only 4% of the ENTJ's answers regarding the education system did not include evidence. A lot of other types, when they looked at this question, they would say something like education sucks or education is great, but they wouldn't give any further explanation or they wouldn't give any further evidence to justify their claim. ENTJs, only 4% did not do that. So ENTJs, it was very important to them. It would seem to, to back up their response. Something else with the ENTJs was the performance aspect. So performance was in a high, was a high frequency word for ENTJs. Um, another one that was a high frequency word was college and university. They also were very likely to say something like education is important, but they would give like a for a specific person. Like education is important if you are going to be a doctor. Education is important if you are going to be a professor. But overall system does not work because of this, this and this. Because it doesn't address all of the differences in, in the people. Mm -hmm. The fourth question, this was also given to all of the 16 types and it was a two part question and people could answer it whichever order they wanted. The question went, if someone wanted to convince you to do something that you are morally against, how would they do so and how do you define your moral code? Um, question went rationale, go see the blog, I'm going to keep saying that, but just real quick, one of the things that I wanted to see was how likely would a child learn something if there was an ethical obstruction? So it is a big deal in the United States and the current education system. There's problems with our curriculum because of people's belief systems standing in the way. And so I was curious to see just anecdotally if somebody believed that education could be one of those obstructions. I also wanted to see how they looked at themselves. I wanted to look at all of the other things I was comparing with the abstract versus that concrete evidence the use of the phrase I feel versus I think and like big picture versus very specific. So all of those things were examined in this question. ENTJs continuing in their trend, they were pretty high on the decisiveness level. So only about 14% of them said they weren't sure or it depends. Half of them said they could be swayed to do something against their moral code. About a third of them said they couldn't. So it was a pretty wide variety for them. One of the big notable things for the ENTJs is that more than any other type, including the FE dominance, ENTJs mentioned the greater good or the good of the whole or the good of society or the good of the group. That was at 22%. So almost a quarter of all ENTJs that were interviewed referenced that. They would do something against their own value system if it was for the good of the group, it was good of everybody else. I have quite a few ENTJs in my life who I really look up to, uh, my father being one of them. And um, ENTJs are typically in a leadership position. Like overwhelmingly, <laughs> you will see an ENTJ in some sort of leadership position. Whether that be 
you know, hundreds of people looking up to them or whether that just be one person who looks up to them. Typically they have impact. They have, um, they're just someone that you look up to at, at some point in your life, you'll come across one and that person will be in that position. That being said, the success of the group is also their success and an ENTJ wants to be successful. And so if you're looking at, I guess I don't mean this to come across as ENTJ, it's not that ENTJs don't have a heart for the greater good, but that is a shocking difference when you look at all of the other types, including the FE DOMs, which would, if you are, if you know MBTI, I think it's fair to say you would assume FE DOMs would have said greater good mm -hmm. first and foremost. And so for the ENTJs to go over that, yes, they have that NI parent, which is going to help with that for sure. However, I would be willing to bet, and ENTJs, if you're watching this, feel free to comment below and let me know what you feel. But if I'm leading a group or if an ENTJ is leading a group and that group is successful and we do what that group needs to be successful, then that in turn also reflects my own personal success which is what I'm going to be after. So yes, I do care about that group and I do want to do what's best for them, but also I do want to make sure that what's best for them is also going to be what brings them success because in turn, it brings me success. So it's not necessarily 100% selfless thinking of the greater good. That's probably going to be more of those FE doms out there. This is more of validation um, for the hard work and the energy and the time that you're spending with that group of people. And I think that it's a pretty safe bet also as to why they would see the education system as such a failure, mm -hmm. because if the education system is failing the greater good, or if it's failing the good of the group, then an ENTJ can't get behind it. Yep. Well, and also they know that what comes from those schools is who they will be leading. Mm -hmm. Everyone that they work with impacts their own success too. So you so desperately want everyone beneath you. I, I don't feel like ENTJs are the types who, um, want to push you down to pull themselves up they might run over you for efficiency purposes and all that like we said in the beginning but i don't think it's necessarily one of like malice when they're looking at you and they're like you know i'm gonna shove you down so that i have more success i don't see that in the entjs entjs want others to look up to them they want to be that leader and that's just something that's naturally built within them um, and they're good at it, you know, they mm -hmm. are. Something else with the ENTJs is um, only 42% of them reference their moral code in the sense that they gave it an actual, like they addressed that part of the question, they gave it an actual shape. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that their moral code is changing, is flexible, is going to bend to however they see meeting their goals. So especially when they're younger, because about half of this, these ENTJs were focused on under 29. So, or under age 29, I'll be super specific there, mm. but they would not be at that stage in their life where they're really focused on their own introverted feeling process yet, which is their inferior function. And so they would be more interested in meeting their, their goals that they have set and sticking to a projected path. So to do that, their morality kind of has to be flexible because you can't have those things popping up, keeping them in the way of meeting their goals at this point in time. So when it comes to education, I would, I think it would be pretty fair to assume that most ENTJs would not have a problem learning information to be successful. Now, some ENTJs may have a big problem with that. And I'm going to talk specifically about that when we get to the implication, because there is a different side of the ENTJs that I want to address, not just the successful ones. But um, but I do think it's fair to assume that the reason that they had such a positive experience is because they didn't have any problem being like, I'm going to do all the group projects, or yeah. I'm going to be telling everybody else what to do, or I don't have any problem learning this piece of history that I know is not true. I can spit out the answer on the test, get my A, move along in my life. Yeah, because the whole point is your own personal success when you're there. Mm -hmm. The fifth task, all 16 types got something that had to deal with their logical processing. It was another metacognitive question. Um, for all of the intuitives, they got the same task and it was describe your relationship with your intuition. So if you want to look at, at this as a competition of who can write the most words, 
I mean, I'm sure other types would say get to the point faster and be more succinct, but if you want to look at it as a competition of most words, this is one of the only ones that ENTJs were not a front runner at all. In fact, of all the other intuitives, this is the time, the one they spent the least amount of time, the intuitive thinkers rather. So this was almost half, it was at 60 average words. Yeah, so half, half mm -hmm. of what they spent on the education question for describe your intuition. 50% of them did not give a further explanation beyond something like, I trust my intuition with my life, or um, intuition is everything to me, or I rather rely on logic than intuition. Something just very brief, that wasn't giving me any details, it wasn't really giving me the those definition descriptors I was looking for for abstract and concrete, that was about 50% of their answers. They thought like a couple words, good enough, to, we're gonna move on. I didn't see a whole lot of things like I go with my gut. Um, only 60% of ENTJs mentioned trusting their intuition all of the time. So about 40% of ENTJs talked about how they would rather rely on logic or they would rather rely on reason they're not going to be somebody who just, they're not going to do something without a reason to back it up, which was interesting for the ENTJs because they are intuitive types. But it's because of that introverted feeling being in the inferior function, mm -hmm. the inferior place, because when we're using intuition in MBTI, we're talking about the way that you are taking in information and making decisions, right? That's the whole process here. That's not how we use intuition on in our day-to-day -day mm -hmm. conversations with people so and even though these people were participating in an mbti related project they're still normal people who typically won't have all of the details around mbti the way that people who study mbti would so when you go to ask someone in your day-to-day -day, what's your situation with your intuition how do you trust your intuition are you intuitive how do you feel they're immediately thinking gut check. Do I listen to my heart? Do I listen to my gut? Do I listen to the woo woo? Do I, you know, like that's what we're, we're usually talking about. And that's definitely not ENTJs. And then when you also look at the ages that we were talking about, the younger, yeah. the younger they are, the less they're going to listen to that because they just, they're so streamlined, so tunnel vision, so focused between that T E and I, and um, that FI just comes into play later, as everyone's inferior function does. It's typically not around in your early to mid 20s like that. So it actually makes total sense. It's just that if you know MBTI and you hear that ENTJs wouldn't or couldn't speak about their intuition, that seems really off. But putting some context around mm -hmm. it, it actually makes sense. So now that we've talked about the data and you can go look and all the things. We're going to talk about some of the implications real quick. So the first one is implications of children who are ENTJs and they are in the education system. Warning. Mm -hmm. So we're, we give this warning on all the education videos and it is part of our typing disclaimer when people come to Typecast Heroes to get typed. Carl Jung did not believe in typing children. Under 18, your personality is not developed enough. Um, in addition, MBTI itself, like MBTI as the company, does not believe in typing children. And the reason for that is because we do not believe that types should be placed on someone to limit them. We do not believe that you should take an MBTI test and it should tell you what job you should go for. We don't believe that it should be used as part of the application process. None of those things. Or who to marry. Or no. <laughs> God. None of these things, it's not supposed to be a script with which you follow your life. And so the fear is that if you give a child a, a type of description like this, then the fear is that they will automatically feel somehow limited. So we don't believe in typing children. However, teachers and parents and educators and anybody who is a, who places stock in the education system, which is all of us, should know how cognitive functions work because it is the job of the adults in the system mm -hmm. to be aware of how children could be perceiving the information giving, being given. No one would accuse a teacher who teaches to kinesthetic learners, auditory learners, and visual learners. Nobody would say, well, that teacher is being limited. That teacher is putting kids in a box. That's the kind of way we are encouraging the education system to look 
at MBTI and look at the cognitive functions. Mm -hmm. It's to be a tool to understand how people see the world and how children learn. It is not to be a box. Additionally, a lot of information out there about ENTJs in particular focuses on how successful they are. And we are too, because a large majority of ENTJs are very successful and they have done a lot with their life and they are the leaders. And we are going to talk about them. But there are ENTJs who have learning disabilities just like everybody else. There are ENTJs who've come from a rough childhood and the education system might not work for them because no matter how smart you are, if you move 16 times in 12 years, like you're not going to be very successful because it's hard to maintain that. There are different ways that ENTJs can present. What we want to talk about is how these challenges can make their cognitive functions rather can be affected by such challenges mm -hmm. like that. So if you are a teacher and you have students who are ENTJs, that means that they are leading with extroverted thinking and introverted intuition. That means that ENTJs, no matter where they are in their life with that extroverted thinking as their first function, is they want to control the environment. They want to control the things. So if you have an ENTJ who is more leaning towards that performance aspect, who does want that validation, who does believe in the good of the group, um, you can have an ENTJ who is like a teacher's pet, who's going to do what they, they're told, who's going to be striving for that perfect grade. With that comes a lot of challenges because you can have a child who is really struggling with perfectionism, mm -hmm. who if they have always done well, if they've always got that over 95% and they hit high school and let's say physics is the thing that like really knocks them off their horse or they just can't get art history. That was my like failure subject. I could not do art history. I got like A's in everything, but art history in college, I was like, peace. <laughs> I, I loved art history. I withdrew. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I'm not an ENTJ, but like I could absolutely could not do art history. It was so boring. I wanted to die. It was boring. It was awful. I just memorization. Mm. Easy A. Not my jam. So ENTJs, when they come to that, when they hit it, they, <laughs> their entire sense of self, because something that we've talked about with ENTJs is that their sense of self is really hard for them to develop because they are very externally focused and very goal oriented. So when they don't meet those goals, their whole self-esteem can just collapse. It will actually crush them. It sounds ridiculous to people who are not an ENTJ, who do not have this built within them, but their self-worth is on their performance, mm -hmm. especially at a younger age. And so this goes for teachers and for parents, and we'll, which we'll talk about you in a second, but if you're a parent to an ENTJ, listen up as well. Because when your kid comes home with their first A minus or B plus, and if you yourself are not like that, and you're you were a C student, and you're like this is great, you know, um, that B could crush that child. Mm -hmm. Truly, like, ooh, I so badly want you to understand this. It can truly crush that child and make them feel like. Why are they even trying? Why should they go? What else can they, like, what are they good at? Why are they even here if they can't do the one thing that they are naturally good at, mm -hmm. that they're naturally gifted at? So many questions and insecurities come up. And for an ENTJ, especially if they've got that really strong TE or if they already are in some leadership positions and they feel like they're being looked at and the spotlight is kind of on them in their life, for them to get a grade that isn't perfect, and especially when other people might point it out, it's crushing. It's problematic. There is a study, if you go to our blog, there's a link that says additional sources. And so there's a lot of studies that I pulled from to like pull all this together just to give us some sort of context. So there was a study done on gifted children. And um, even though ENTJs are less than 2% of the population, they are 7% of gifted students. So if you look at all the gifted kids who were in this particular study, they're 7%. That's a big group of gifted kids. And if you look at their tendency to play in the abstract world, they do really well with abstract big picture concepts. However, if you are an ENTJ and you move to a different country where they don't speak your language or you have a learning disability, because like I said, ENTJs can have stuff like dyslexia or they can have like dyscalculia, which is like dyslexia from numbers with people who struggle with math. Those two things can happen. Or ADD, ADHD, or ADHD, ADHD like ADHD, yeah. uh, some of those, the, the common ones that we're seeing right now. So if you are an ENTJ and 
you have that we're not even talking about perfectionism right now. We're talking about just extroverted thinking, which leads to a desire to control your environment. And you can't control your environment because kids have to sit in school all day. And so if you are an ENTJ who wants to control things, but you can't understand what's happening because you don't speak the language, or you can't read it because you have dyslexia and everything is twisted, that's gonna make you mad. It's gonna lead to a lot of anger. And so as a teacher who's seeing, and this is just common sense for teachers, it should be anyway, in general, if you're dealing with anger in your classroom, it's usually a sign of something else, mm -hmm. not a sign that the child is mad at you. I know so many teachers who need to take that language, like who need to take that lesson to heart and understand that it's not personal, but oh, don't get me started. For an ENTJ child, that's gonna make them furious and right, understandably so. Mm -hmm. So for a teacher who sees that, you know, some kids, when they can't do something, their cognitive functions are going to lead towards, especially like the intuitive or the introverted types rather, are going to kind of collapse in on themselves mm -hmm. and they shut down. For an ENTJ child who can't do something, you might see it as real as anger. That's probably how it's going to present because that's something that they can control. Or you might see them start acting out or you may see um, them just disregarding education altogether. Now, some might try a lot harder. If they have a supportive family, if right. they have um, if they have the tools that they need, some that that because I know a lot of ENTJs who are very successful who have struggled with various types of disabilities, but they if they don't have that support system, if they aren't getting that that form of control or validation elsewhere, they, it can show up really negatively. And it's really important that teachers understand that one of the scariest things I think is an ENTJ who can't control anything and they get really upset. It's probably the number one emotion you'll see from an ENTJ mm -hmm. from start to finish, like in their entire life. And that's not even just children, ENTJs, but it's because of that. It's because the, that need to control, no matter what age you are, you eventually kind of mature and can find balance if you want to, <laughs> um, and but regardless, your your first your go to is to control the environment, and when you cannot do that, that's one thing like about being the teacher's pet is that you can kind of have it your own way if you're yeah. the teacher's pet, right? It's mm -hmm. so, like if you've got that one on one and with the teacher, then you can kind of do all your work in class and then do what you want at the end of class, and you're kind of controlling your time and your energy there. If you're sitting front and center, you don't have to worry about what everyone else is doing wrong around you because you know it's happening. And so if you're front and center, instead of sitting at the back of the class, all you're focused on is what's right in front of you. So even with your placement in the classroom and how you're managing your time, you're still finding any tiny little straw to grasp that control mm -hmm. in your day to day. That's a good point too. So. With all of those things being said, I wanted to talk about that introverted intuition as that second as well. ENTJs like the big picture. So if an ENTJ is struggling, they may be struggling because they can't see it. They can't see the big picture. They may be struggling because the teacher hasn't put it into context. And really just a good rule of thumb for all teachers is starting with the big picture is probably best for most types um, so that they can learn and understand mm -hmm. how the concept all fits together. Starting with the big picture and then zooming in is more helpful, I think, just in general. But for ENTJs in particular, if they can't see the big picture, that's a problem. Um, Which can also lead to some subjects down the line maybe feeling like, why am I here? This is a waste of my time. Mm -hmm. If they can't actually see what the point of it is mm -hmm. on how... And so we talked about this a little bit with... Um, was it ESTPs? ISTPs. So we ISTPs. Um, about how to kind of take that abstract concept and bring it into like a concrete reality. You're still dealing with introverted intuition and extroverted sensing with an ENTJ. That's their parent and child function. Mm -hmm. And so they can play with it just as, as much as the ISTPs could. Um, and which really what that means is, is they need to see the holistic picture. They need to see and even better, if you can give them the processes within the holistic picture is like fantastic for that extroverted thinking. Um, but then also bringing it into a, how does this actually impact? What is this actually doing in the world mm -hmm. as well is super helpful.
Exactly. So that is for the teachers of ENTJ children. And again, you don't sit and type all of your students, but you keep all of this in mind. So when you see certain things, you know what to do. So if you see a perfectionist, if you see a child who seems really smart, but they're struggling because of disabilities or home life, you know how, you know kind of what to watch out for. So with that being said, parents of ENTJs, a lot of what we just said can be the same thing. You have to be that supportive person. You have to be like Amanda gave some great examples about dealing with perfectionism with ENTJs. So we kind of covered parents, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to teachers. So we referenced this earlier. ENTJs are typically the leaders of the education system, right? So 20% of the whole program. ENTJ is less than 2% of the world, but 20% of the leadership. <sighs> what? Okay, <laughs> so ENTJs usually are not the ones actually in the classroom. So here's my thing as a personal teacher, my message really to all the people in charge of education, you need to spend some time in the classroom as a teacher before you can tell us what to do. You just do. Like, I don't think that anybody should be in charge of education until they've actually been a teacher because you don't know. You're going to think you know, you don't know. It's so frustrating to me that most of our policymakers are people who weren't teachers. So for ENTJs who want to go into the education system, they're like, yes, I've got all these great ideas. You probably do have great ideas, but I strongly encourage you to spend some time in the classroom yourself if you are an ENTJ and you're going to be a teacher because ENTJs have great big idealistic visions. I worked for a principal like this a couple years ago, no longer do, but who have great big idealistic visions of what the education system can do. But people, and they're all for the greater good, right? So they are going to be like, I don't care if you've got 25 years of experience in education. I've got this greater good image. Like, this is the thing we're going to do now. I want to, like, use that. And it may actually not be the most practical thing. It may not be something that's actually helpful for the education system. The education system's real broken. Mm -hmm. We need ENTJ leaders and teachers to come and fix it but you have to spend some time and gain, gain that experience because your experience in the education system for most of you was positive. If you were having, oh man, if you had a negative experience in the education system and you wanna come work in the education system, I think that'd be great. Those are the ones we need. It's the ones who, who hated at school and then decided and to, to make be, it a better place. Yes. Not seek revenge, but actually wanna make it a better place. <laughs> <Don't say revenge. laughs> that was my first thought was like, you're asking an ENTJ who had a bad time to come back? No, if them. you're, if you're, it, yes, if you're wanting to make it a better place, absolutely, for sure, yeah, because you'll, you'll be one of those, I mean, again, ENTJs already are only 2%, and the majority had a great experience, and so you would be that, the minority of the minority coming in to help this cause, to help mm -hmm. this, this institution, which is so necessary right now. Exactly. I will say that I feel like, again, just kind of knowing ENTJs, that, when you guys are in this position of power or leadership, a lot of times it feels like I shouldn't be in the weeds with my people because they're not going to be able to see it my way. And I don't want to be, I don't want to kind of get down in that level, get down and dirty in that level and then have my opinion swayed. And while I respect that, because in a position of management or leadership or anything like that, you also have to be able to remove yourself from the hard position that your team is in so that you can look at the bigger picture. But I'm not even a teacher and I feel for teachers for when my best friend is one, mm -hmm. but also I'm just looking at the education system as a whole and especially just how we just went through COVID. I'm going to be real honest. Um, I feel like there were a lot of decisions made with little to no thought of how it actually impacted the people that were having to implement these decisions that were being made. So there's a difference between looking at the child and the family and then looking at the people who actually have to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> you make the decision, but then you have to also understand that your decision, you're not the one implementing your decision. You're just making the decision and then asking others to implement it. So make sure that you do take in consideration those who are actually making that plan happen. For one, make sure that they actually can. Make sure that it's not against their morals. I know that's one of the last thoughts for you guys, mm -hmm. but that actually does mean something to most of the teachers mm -hmm. out there. That's part of why they can be around children and help support them and help them grow. So be sure you're checking in with that. 
but also again just to get another perspective it's not your way or the highway at the end of the day maybe it does come down to your choice but just know that again greater good means that you want others to respect you so that you have more people following you which means that you can make a bigger impact at the end of the day it all goes hand in hand exactly and really the last thing that we have to talk about is ENTJs as parents, because we talked about ENTJs as teachers, teachers of ENTJs, um, parents of ENTJs, but ENTJs as parents, don't push your child too hard, <laughs> is my basic thing. Um, ENTJs really has the same advice that Amanda just gave to ENTJs as leaders. ENTJs as parents really need to understand, especially for the ones who had a positive experience in the education system, they really need to understand that their child and that most people probably can't do all the things that they did not in the same way at least they're not going to be able to just push past any obstacle really it's very it's different people look at obstacles in a different way and some people don't even see the point of surpassing those obstacles and for an ENTJ that may be unimaginable but for ENTJs who are parents I think taking the time to really really understand that you are so rare and that your children are not going to be like you which is the same advice we give to all parents but understanding that your kids are not going to meet your expectations the same way is probably the most valuable thing and amanda you had me in tj as a parent so what do you say yeah i feel like most of the time when ntjs are looking outward and and they're like if they're looking at a team setting or if they're looking at their wherever they're working or their friends or whatever it's almost almost to the point of cockiness where you're like no one else is like me it's like you know that you do know that and you understand that but i feel like what i see is when an anti j becomes a parent it's almost like a piece of you and so there's there's almost this expectation or not even yeah no an expectation yeah. there there there's also this little bit of a hope too that i think that maybe because this person is part of you and you are who you are and so rare and so great that this child is also going to be that in the same way. And I think that that sometimes can be kind of hard to navigate around and kind of hard to, although I, I feel like when the NTJs are looking outward, they don't necessarily have that same expectation. Not always, some do, but not always. But looking at your child, it's like a different, a different relationship, a different hope, a different expectation. So just know that Yes, even though that beautiful child is a piece of you and they do have so many of your traits and I'm sure they have pieces of your personality that they're fitting together within themselves as well. They are their own person. Um, and so first, don't write off their passions, even if their passion isn't necessarily logical. If they wanna go into arts, if they wanna go into um, to something that maybe doesn't look like it's gonna be the most successful career, as well you guys are long-term thinkers big picture long-term thinkers not everyone is like that and children for sure are not like that and you should allow your child to live in the moment and have fun and pursue something that might not be a successful career but it's something that will help them grow as a person because that also matters right right it matters <laughs> um, and then also just take a chill pill on your kids period if they, they might not be the best at everything they do they may not ever win an award they may not ever make an a they may not ever be the best of the best at anything that they try but that child might be the nicest kindest human that would give the shirt off their back to any human that walks by them any day of the week and that is admirable and something to be loved and respected and so twist your version of success or um of success really one more piece of advice your child is not necessarily a reflection of your success mm -hmm. so kind of how your groups are that you lead and talking about that greater good potentially like i was saying earlier you really want what's best for the greater good you want them to be successful because that is still a reflection of your own personal success but just know that your child is once again their own person they're going to make their own decisions it doesn't matter how great of a parent you are you might have a really shitty kid and if you're a really bad parent you might have a really great kid like it yes we should all try our best and we should be the best versions of ourselves and the best parents and the most supportive that we can be but at the end of the day your child's going to decide on their own life path and so just be there for them and support them and know that it might not look the way that you um always thought that it would 
and just accept them for whoever they do turn out to be. Because being human is really hard. And hopefully this makes it just a little bit easier. Thank you for watching our video. Thank you to all the ENTJs who participated. Stick around because we do have all these resources on our channel for ENTJs. Um, so many videos that you can watch for personal growth or just to learn more about your type and to learn about the types of others, which I very strongly encourage you to go do. Yeah. Um, and we will be doing a new data set hopefully in the fall of 2021. So if you are an ENTJ, it's not over yet, but Amanda's going to tell you what to do to keep in touch. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, Discord, and YouTube. We also have a Gmail account. We've got our blog. There's a contact us mm -hmm. form on the blog as well. So many different avenues to contact us. And again, like Jesse said, trying to come out with a new data set in the fall. Um, which I'm just so interested to mm -hmm. it's gonna be see fun. it all happen. Yeah, I would like to know that if there was anything that you guys disagreed with or agreed with that we said, comment below and let us know. And then also type clarification. If you want to have your type clarified, please hit us up and we'll get in contact. Thank you for watching. Let's gather around the type fire and sing our type fire song. Our M-B-T-I-T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y song. And if you feel uncomfortable, then know there's nothing wrong.